Both of these films have state-of-the-art motion capture. In fact, both of the main motion capture characters were key characters in the Donut the Planet of the Apes movie. Another fun fact is that both of these films have a Stark father reference. Ned Stark that got killed in season one of Game of Thrones is in this movie, and Howard Stark who got killed in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is in this film. Although there's magic, demons, and all that sci-fi stuff in this movie, it's grounded as it can be, and with most of the stuff that happens, you believe it's realistic in their universe. Except one major plot hole in particular. There's no way in hell a person could walk around barefoot all day and not catch hepatitis. The movie is about good versus evil, basically. On the good guy side, they're led by a brave warrior. The character is not only respected by the good guys, but later on in the movie, he earns the respect of the green people too. There's a part where he's fighting one on one and he's surrounded by a gang of the green people. But after he wins the fight, they're all like, you got the juice now, man. And leave him alone. But, anyways, every warrior needs a weapon. So, a weapon is forged for the warrior guy because he thinks a war is coming. He's right, and a war is coming. But it's a huge disadvantage in favor of the bad guys. The orcs are bigger, badder, braver, and pretty much everything that starts with the letter B. Another advantage they have is their wargs, the large wolves they ride during battle. The only way I see the good guys beating them is if two things happen. First, they would have to unite the Seven Kingdoms in the movie. I know every race in the Seven Kingdoms. Along with the crowns of the Seven Kings. And second, they would have to get help from the magical sorcerer character from X-Men 3 The Last Stand. They're able to get help from the sorcerer, but aren't able to get help from the other kingdoms. They picked the worst possible time to pull the immature card, and the kingdoms refuse to unite because of some petty beef. What are the other kingdoms? All seek our protection, yet none trust us enough to tell us anything. Why should we ride to the aid of those who did not come to ours? Aware of the feud, the enemy starts to hypnotize people like Biggie Smalls. The worst type of traitors are the traitors who aren't aware of their actions. The corrupted one starts hearing voices in his head. I can hear his voice in my head. Then we get a prophecy that spoiler alerts what's going to happen next at the part with the enchanted hooded character. The prophecy tells us that a light will spring out of darkness. From light comes darkness, and from darkness, a light from the shadow shall spring. When we get to the battle, the orcs are ready and leave their feelings out of it. But one of the humans is making bad decisions because he's blinded by hatred. His son was killed by orcs during battle and he's clearly out for revenge. The good guys discover where the orcs camp is located because of the fire in the sky. Not only are the orcs bigger and badder like I mentioned earlier, but they have magic on their side too because their leader is a witch king. The witch king of Agma. The Witch King opens up a green doorway for his army of orcs and they march to battle against the army of men. At first you're like crap because you think there's no place to run or hide, but except there totally is. The orcs were born without peripheral vision or something because the good guys have a small recon team hiding out in the open and none of the orcs see them. A lot of the leaders don't want to go to war and they almost don't go to war actually, but the wizard from X-Men 3 tricks all the kingdoms into fighting and taking the last stand. Boom boom. It's pretty obvious who's supposed to win the battle, on paper at least. The king realizes how lopsided it is and he goes to the valley to negotiate with a couple of third party soldiers to join forces against the witch king. Fast forward to the battle scene and everybody is getting their butts kicked. Boys aren't supposed to hit girls, which is why the female soldier takes advantage and starts slaying a lot of people. The ground is filled with dead bodies and the air is filled with green souls of dead people too. So everyone is either dead or dying almost. For a second, it looks like there's no hope for a sequel whatsoever because all the main characters are dying too. Then right before everyone gets extinct, there's an explosion at the top of the tower where the main bad guy lives and then Eagles fly down to save the day and the battle's over. In the end, there's a ceremony at the kingdom where a new leader is chosen and everybody cheers because he isn't a Republican or a Democrat. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps> <laughs> Best elevator music I've ever heard.